Oh, good morning, Senator. And uh, Senator Schmidt will be with us in just a few minutes to talk about the uh, launch of the space shuttle, which is due to happen tomorrow morning. Good morning, everybody. There is a live shot this morning, Thursday, the 9th of April, from the Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. And the countdown is on. In just 24 hours, if everything stays on schedule, uh, the Space Shuttle Columbia will be in the air tomorrow morning at this time and heading toward an orbit around the Earth. The hours uh, until then uh, will be very busy ones at the Kennedy Space Center. In a few minutes, we'll find out what's happening. Uh, we'll talk with Senator Harrison Schmidt, a former astronaut from whom we have just heard, and also uh, John Yardley. He is the man in charge of the Space Shuttle program. They're both at the Space Center. We'll talk to them in about 15 minutes. Cape Canaveral, they're now describing the space shuttle countdown as uneventful, and that's just the way they want to keep it until launch time tomorrow morning. Rebecca Chase is standing by at the Kennedy Space Center this morning with the latest. Becky? Good morning, Steve. Here at the Kennedy Space Center, we are at T-12 hours and holding. It's a scheduled 11-hour hold, which means the countdown resumes this afternoon. Now, the preparations continued through the night, and NASA officials report that for the first time, no new problems have been discovered, and everything is on schedule. Astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen were awakened at 2 a.m. this morning, same as launch day, and they should be airborne by now in their shuttle trainer making practice emergency abort landings. As you can see, the skies are clear and the wind is low, and that's good news here. We're told that all systems are go, including the weather, for tomorrow's launch. Steve? <laughs> seven right now smiling a little bit because i'm getting excited tomorrow morning 6:50 eastern standard time space shuttle columbia scheduled for launch uh, the astronauts john young and robert crippen uh, arrived at the kennedy space center yesterday to start their final preparations uh, they will become the first americans in six years to fly in space john yardley is in charge of the space shuttle program uh, he is joining us this morning from the kennedy space center in florida and with him is jack schmidt senator harrison schmidt He's from New Mexico, now a senator, formerly an astronaut. Gentlemen, good morning. Good to have you with us today. Great to be here. Good morning, David. Mr. Yardley, give us an update. What are the chances for a launch tomorrow morning? They're looking just super. Uh, we, you know, we had a few problems earlier in the week that cost us a little time, but we built a lot of hold into our account. We're now all caught up, and we're holding with hardly anything to do till 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> what are the critical steps between now and tomorrow morning at 6.50? The primary critical step is, is loading the propellants. And, of course, uh, weather is always uh, a concern. And wh why the weather is so important? Well, this is a first flight, and we have to be super careful about the conditions at the various abort landing sites and at the launch site. And we've got three different landing sites and one launch site. And when you put them all together statistically, making sure they all have visibility, cloud cover is low, winds are low, it, it just becomes a problem. What is the forecast right now? How is it looking? The forecast is 100% good all across the country for our purposes, for tomorrow. Senator Schmidt, now you have spoken, uh, you told us, with, uh, with uh, Crippen and Young. You have made that trip before. How are they feeling, and what are they going through right now? Well, as of yesterday, uh, David, they were extremely excited and ready to go, and I think they've been ready for at least a year. Uh, if I, all the conversations I've had with them are any indication. John uh, has the typical attitude of a program manager. He says the most critical thing is to load the propellant. So, of course, John and Crip think the most critical thing is to load the crew. <laughs> and uh, when we were preparing for Apollo 17, that obviously was on our mind, and and uh, just anxious to go, really, and thinking about the little things that you've got to remember, and when is the right time to go to the bathroom the last time, and, and little things like that that uh, mean a lot when you get up there and, and uh, have to anticipate being in the cockpit for quite a while before the launch. We were there for two hours and 40 minutes, you may recall, before after the norm normal launch time, and we hope that doesn't happen this time, but you've got to think ahead. Mr. Yardley, this is called a test flight. What are the critical tests uh, for the shuttle? Well, the main critical tests are can we launch without problems and can we descend in the uh, lifting entry mode, which is a brand new first, uh, without problems. We're not really looking for major achievements in orbit. It's basically a successful landing. Uh, Senator, the crew is going to be tested as well. Now, Mr. Young has been up before, uh, uh, but uh, Mr. Crippen, I understand, is not. What? What are the demands on them in the next, uh, what, 72 hours or four days? Well, David, the, uh, the important thing, of course, is to 
always uh, try to stick with the uh, flight plan uh, and be ready, of course, and uh, through the training, you are ready for any off nominal, off normal uh, situation that might develop. But if you're going to have a successful mission, everybody realizes that uh, you have to uh, try to stick with that flight plan. Now, I know uh, I just reviewed the flight plan again last night, and it, you know, they all look full, and we, until you get up there, you just don't know how full the flight plan is. Uh, obviously, uh, NASA would not be using it if they didn't think it was doable. Uh, the crew, uh, however, uh, has, it's amazing how relaxed you are compared to everybody around you when you reach this point. Uh, I, I, and I don't think any of the Apollo 17 crew had any problem getting a good night's sleep, uh, had a good breakfast uh, before the launch, and, uh, and you're ready to go. They, the simulation and training and the preparation and thought really make a difference. Mr. Yardley, what will it take for this mission to be called a success, for you to call it a success? Uh, if we get into orbit and if we land successfully with no significant damage. What will you learn from this one flight? Well, David, this vehicle is an entirely new configuration, both launch and entry. And what we'll mostly learn is, are all of our uh, development tests, our wind tunnel tests, are they accurate enough to provide good engineering data to design this vehicle. And of course, uh, we'll know about 80% of, of uh, the, whole, the total 100% that we don't know now after the first flight. Senator, some people say that the shuttle has been designed more for military use than anything else. What's your opinion? Oh, no. It's, uh, it's, its design is to be extremely versatile, and it will have both civil and military applications. I think far beyond even what NASA and the Department of Defense envision for themselves at the present time. Uh, the, the critical thing that we're trying to do different, other than uh, the, the things mentioned uh, by John, in my opinion, and I would suspect in the crew's opinion, is to try to fly a vehicle back to uh, Earth rather than uh, brute force it through a re-entry so that you can reuse it again. That is the new thing that NASA is trying to do and the U.S. is trying to do with this flight. How much, gentlemen, how much is riding on this flight as far as the entire space program is concerned? Well, I, yeah. I would... Senator, go ahead. Well, I would say, David, that uh, obviously with every launch, a great deal is riding on it, not only the human lives involved, but but the, uh, the momentum that the country needs to have as we move into space. Let's face it, uh, civilization of various kinds are moving into space. Uh, the, the issue before the United States is are we going to be competitive uh, in that new uh, ocean of space? And the space shuttle now is our means of becoming competitive once again in a systematic way in, in utilizing the resources of space and of uh, being a, a player in this game. The Soviet Union has obviously been the dominant player for five, six years now. Uh, with an inferior technology and a superior will, they're, they're just uh, beating the pants off of us. Well, the space shuttle now gives, gives us the chance to turn that around, and we must take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, whether this flight is fully successful or not, we have no alternative but to move into space. Mr. Yardley, in just a couple of seconds, are you excited this morning? I certainly am, David, but not as much as I will be tomorrow morning. <laughs> and, Senator, in just also a couple of seconds, how does it feel for you to look over at that pad? You have been up there sitting in a vehicle on top of a rocket. What is memories coming back to you? David, I'm envious, and I'm ready to go, and I, I wish that I'd had that, have that opportunity again. Obviously, I have other things to do now, but you can't help but look out there and wish you were there. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Crippen and Mr. Young are saying, hey, Schmidt. <laughs> yeah, they, this is our trip, right? Yeah, that's right. I tried to talk them into a place, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't even hear of it. Thank you, gentlemen. The first reusable spaceship to make space travel commonplace. A drama. Will it fly? Is it safe? A determination to outwit the Soviets in the race for military advantage in space. flight is really a test flight to test whether the shuttle is airworthy or spaceworthy. Minutes after the liftoff from Florida, the shuttle will have shed its two booster engines and the huge external fuel tank before it settles into orbit around the Earth, flying about 173 miles above the Earth. goes well, this mission will last two full days plus six and a half hours, a total of 54 and a half hours. The shuttle can carry a crew of seven. This time it will carry a crew of two. It will be John Young's fifth space flight.